Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Strike Zone with St. Paul Saints manager George Samus. Strike Zone is a weekly program that gives you, the fans, the opportunity to ask the St. Paul manager questions about the Saints, baseball or sports in general, or just seek George's wisdom about life events that are going on out there. This week we have an exciting episode for you as George discusses what's going on with the American Association schedule. He shares with us a little bit of his insights about what's going on with Major League Baseball so far this season. And George explains to us what his take is on really what is a football move. So let's get right to strike zone. So let's welcome back manager George Samus this week. George, first of all, let's begin with Saints updates you have for us. Um, we're hoping that we'll get a schedule out here in the in the next day or two. And you know, like I said, hopefully next week when we're talking, we'll, we'll be able to discuss the schedule and, and what's happening with our league. And, and obviously before that, go Vikings. How about them? They pulled it out again yesterday. Well, let's go to a Vikings update because there were lots of people who had questions about that. So tell me a little bit about what you saw out of that game. That was, you know, going into Oakland, because Oakland's a decent team now. You know, they're no pushover anymore. And going in there, that was, they did a great job. Um, you know, the Vikings defense, that's a nasty defense. And it's it was exciting to, to see them win. And now the Vikings are in first place with the big showdown next week. So, you know, good for the Vikings, and I hope they can keep it going. They sure do look tough, that's for sure. Uh, I wanted to ask, um, there was a move that I saw it on the website that Steve Nickerack was released by the team. Uh, is are, are you intending that he would wind up somewhere else, or how does that work out for you? No, he's no, he's going he's gonna to retire. He's, I think he's just going to try to get a job here and um, out there in the real world. So it was, um, yeah, he, he just decided to hang up the cleats, as he put it, and... Um, He's a great kid, and it's a, you know, I hope everything works out for him. And um, you know, especially after what happened to him last year, you know, with him getting hit in the face by that pitch, and um, you you won't meet a better kid than him. And you know, I wish him the best of luck and everything. And um, but that's what happened. He he just decided just to shut it down. Perfectly understandable from that standpoint. Uh, you don't have the schedule out at this point, but I did notice that on the Can-Am League schedule that there's no interleague play this year. So that's uh, that's out for everybody, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, no more interleague play. Um, you know, I, I believe there are six teams over there, and then I believe they're playing um, a Japanese travel team, and I believe a Cuban one as well, too. So no interleague play, and we'll just play the teams in our league, and um, and obviously that's okay. Well, let's get right to our fan questions this week. So we begin first with Jeff from Apple Valley who asks, this kind of extended question, the Saints had a great regular season success in 2015, but then lost in the first round of the playoffs. Are you going to build a 2016 team with an eye toward playoff success as opposed to regular season success? Previous Saints teams in recent memory, particularly 2015, have seemed to collapse at the end of the regular season for various reasons. What steps can you take when constructing the roster to be more playoff ready in 2016? You know, every year when you're building a team and um, you're out there, your goal is to win a championship, and that's what your goal should be. And um, You know, we had an excellent regular season, and um, I mean, to win – as many games as we did, it's it was an incredible season, and and I don't think, you know, I don't think we collapsed in the playoffs. I think we played a real good team, and they just happened to play a little bit better than us. And you know, and it's not that what we did wrong. It's you have to give credit to another good team that you know that did a great job, and um, you know, it just we were one big hit away and one big play away, and they happened to make one more big play. I know we've talked about this before. We're right fielder threw out a guy at home plate and in a big spot and big part of them winning and they just played a little bit better in the playoffs but I don't think we collapsed you know it just it was a good series and they were a little bit better but in previous years though I, I do agree there's times that down the stretch you know we have collapsed and um, and we're not going to have that happen anymore because it's it's my job and you know to bring in the right guys here and you need to have the right guys to compete all year for 100 games, not for 75, 80 games. And so that, that won't be happening. We won't be collapsing down the stretch because you know, we'll have the right guys every year. And, you know, we hope to put on a good show every year for the fans and, you know, and to win a championship. And anything short of winning a championship is not good enough. I know you're not one to look for excuses in, in any way, but 
I I found collapse kind of a uh, a word that I wouldn't have personally used myself, just because if you want to say that you collapsed in comparison to the first 15 games of the season as comparison to last, well, you were 14 and one. Who goes 14 and one all the time? So, I mean, I thought that was kind of a, an unfair characterization um, t- by this person to even say that your team didn't deliver when to expect you to win 14 out of every 15 games seems completely unreasonable all the time. Yeah, but you know what? It's, it's you know, like I said, we didn't collapse this year. But in 2014, yeah, we did collapse. You know, we were right there leading the wild card in, in 2014, and we collapsed on the stretch, and it was it was one horrible August we had, and... Um, so if he would have said 2014, I would have been right there with him and agreeing with him. And it has happened in the past. And but again, you need to have the right guys that want to play 100 games and um, and finish out the seasons. And um, so it's okay, you know, it's it's there's great times, great seasons, and then there's frustrating times. And in 2014, we did have a frust- frustrating collapse. And um, but again, 2015, we just played a real good team that just played a little bit better than us. Our next question comes from Jeremy from St. Paulo asks, Rob, War- Rob Wart excuse me, was signed by the Red Sox organization, which he's sure you're not shedding any tears about. You know, good for him that he got the opportunity, just like Dezalek did. You know, those were two of the better relievers in the league. And, um, you know, when they came in, both of them, they were pretty tough to hit. And um, so it's good that both of them are getting the opportunity and, um, and hopefully we don't see either one of them in our league again because hopefully they get a fair chance. And um, if both of them start the season in Double A, I wouldn't be surprised at all because I think both of them could be successful there. Absolutely. Mike from Minneapolis wonders. He's curious about how when tragedies and events go on in the world or in America, like what happened in France or what happened at the University of Missouri, is it hard to keep that kind of stuff off the field and just play the games and have fun? Yeah, it's that, that's a terrible time, and it's just it's it's really sad that it happens, and it's just if you just never know what's going to happen out there, and um, you know, you, again, you try to keep it off the field, and you hope something like that never happens again, and um, but we want to go out there and and have fun and play the game the right way, and you know, and play the fans and hope the fans can you know enjoy it as well too. But again, it's just it, it was a sad. It's a sad thing to see. Absolutely. Paul from Bloomington wonders, Chris and Brian, uh, Chris Bryant and C- uh, Carlos Correa are likely to be the rookies of the year. What do you see as the ceiling for these guys? You know what? They're pretty good, both of them. And, <laughs> you know, it's, when these guys come up, you, know, you hear about all the prospects and you just don't know what you're going to get. But both of them, outstanding. And, um, and Chris Bryant, he may be hitting 30, 40 home runs for a long time and, so, and some people are already calling Korea maybe the best shortstop in the league already. So it's it's two guys that we maybe see playing this game for 15 years and two uh, two outstanding guys. They are pretty pretty solid for sure. Lionel from St. Paul wants to know: Do you see the Royals repeating as World Series champions next season? It wouldn't surprise me because they get it done and they play the game the right way. And um, but you know what? Uh, hopefully it's hopefully it's somebody else doing it, and you know hopefully the the twins can be a team that can be in contention, and you know, they got a little bit better this year, and they got closer. And you know, if, like I said, nobody expected the Royals, you know, last season to be in the World Series or, or the Mets this season, and so why can't it be the Twins? So hopefully, um, hopefully we don't see the Royals repeating, and hopefully we can see the Twins, um, you know, sneak in there and. You never know what's going to happen. Craig from Atlanta asks, what happened to the Atlanta Braves? They seem to always make such great moves to, for them that kept their team right in the race, and even a couple of seasons ago they seemed so good. How have they fallen so quickly? Yeah, it's, they were great for such a long time with with the Greg Maddox and John Smoltz and Tom Glavin, and if things have changed there. and um, I'm not sure what year they're going into that new stadium. I'm not sure if it was 2017, but um, maybe they're – Waiting until then. Uh, like I said, I'm not really, sh- I'm not really sure what the situation is, and but it's just um, from one of the greatest organizations over the years, um, you know. But I guess not anymore. And um, like the Cardinals, for for example, they're great every year, aren't they? They're just a bunch of solid guys that always have a great team out there, and um, you always see them, you know, in the playoffs or you know, close to it. 
it, it proves that you really have to have the entire levels of organization, ownership, GMs and presidents and manager, and everybody's kind of got to be on board to really make a team a, a, a great success for a long time. Yep, absolutely. And again, they just treated Kimberly the other day. So it just, um, and then you hear that they're shopping Freddie Freeman. So, you know, who knows? Maybe they're just loading up. Maybe they're going to do what the, you know, what the Mets are doing. You know, the Mets have all those young guys coming up and the young, great pitching. And so maybe the best of the Braves are trying to do, and maybe we'll see them be a contender in the next couple of years again. Bruce from Mount asks you, does it seem to you that there is a type of pitcher that seems to lose their effectiveness much more quickly than others? It seems to him that closers see their careers end much more quickly than starters or setup guys. You know, that is, that's an interesting question because, you know what, it's, that's tough to answer. You, you just don't know. It's, you know, it's, I guess when you lose your fastball, I guess it's, it's a problem. Um, <laughs> um, you've seen a lot of, a lot of quality starters and you've seen a lot of, Quality relievers that last a while too. So just um, yeah, that's a tricky one. It's just you could play this game for 15 years, or you can blow out your arm and be gone in two years. It's just um, I think you need a little luck on your side too. And at times it happens for some guys, and some guys get hurt, and it's just it's just too bad that well, that happens. But um, I guess it's better to be lucky. Well, I think of a guy like Joe Nathan when I you know when I was had read this question originally. I mean, he he has such a huge year in in Texas, signs for big money to go to Detroit, and then just doesn't have it anymore. And and, and I thought, wow, it it did seem that he just. I mean, the guy was phenomenal the one year in Texas, and I, and I just don't really understand what happens at that point. Yeah, you know what? And he's been so he's been a great pitcher for so long too, and. Um... You know, and people sometimes people don't really know. You know how sometimes guys pitch with injuries. I know at the end of my career, I I pitch with an injury because you know you think it's going to be your last year and you don't want it to end, and maybe you're not 100 percent healthy, and um, you know it's just it's just times that it's just I don't know. Maybe you're just not 100 percent healthy, and, and the times you know we really never know what what the situation is, and. Um, even watching Peyton Manning yesterday, you're like, okay, well he's done, he's done, he's done, and then you and you see he's he's got that he's got that foot injury, and you know, but you don't know it during the game. So, yeah, you know, sometimes guys play hurt, and you know where maybe they shouldn't be. Well, I know I know you've talked about too sometimes that a guy fits into an organization or or even a stadium in a certain way, and sometimes I think if you if you take yourself out of that stadium where you pitch, you know, 50 times a year. Um, you lose your effectiveness at that point. Yeah, it's um, it's it's weird how the game works. Like I said, Joe Nathan, he's been a quality guy for for such a long time, a great closer for such a long time. So, um, you know, maybe it's just, he like said, maybe he's just not a hundred percent healthy, and you know, who knows? And you can't argue with the three hundred and something saves he's got. Uh, no, no That's doubt right. about that. <laughs> No doubt. Steve from Arden Hills asks, with Bartolo Colon doing so well in his early 40s, a George Samus comeback? That would be outstanding. I would love to do it, and I wish I could. And if they let me throw from halfway, I, I'm sure I could be pretty good. Because <laughs> in batting practice, I, you know, you put me there, you know, halfway in between, and it's it's good. But going back to 60 feet, I don't think I could make it anymore. And and that's one thing I do miss playing the game. You know, that's something I wish I could still play and still can play for a long time. But um, so to our players and anybody playing, enjoy it as long as you can and work as hard as you can because it's you know, you're closer than you think. One day you can be playing for us. You know, the next day you could be in Double A AA or Triple A and get a shot in the big league. So just work as hard as you can and. You can't play this game forever, and just, you know I wish there's times I could have played a little bit longer. Walter from St. Paul wonders, what do you think of that Korean guy, which I think is Suk Min Yoon, if I'm saying this correctly, and I apologize if I'm not, uh, that the Twins recently signed? Yeah, obviously I, I don't know anything about him. Never seen him play. You just hear the stories about the home runs, and hopefully he can be a big bat that the you know Twins can use. So hopefully he can come in and hit some home runs and. Um, you know, and again, the twins of that lineup, those young guys coming up, and those prospects, and hopefully this will be another big bat and can put them over the top. Shep from Bloomington would like to know from you: Who do you think is the more attractive free agent, Zach Greinke or David Price? Both of them. I think both of them. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, Granky was that year was outstanding. Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but was it a one something ERA and one David seven. Price has been so good so long too. But um, if I had to take one, I guess I guess Granky would be the guy. But if you get either one of them, it's you know it, it's a great thing. But but you know what though, I know we've talked about this before. It's you know, the Roy- like the Royals, for example, and the Mets too. It's just um, they've proved that you don't need to have the big stars and the big priced, high priced free agents. You just need to have some young, solid, hungry guys. And um, so, you know, if you get either cranky or Price, that's great. But if you don't, hey, you know what? Hopefully, you can go with those younger guys. That, again, I don't think anybody would um, argue about the, that Mets rotation being being as good as anybody's and. You know, there's no high price guys there yet. Well, think about too. Other than Matt Harvey, if you'd have asked anybody when the Mets season began who their other four starters were, I bet nobody could have named anyone out of that. And look at the job those guys did. So, uh, absolutely. It's just um, in year to year, you just don't know what you have. And like I said, even when we talked about Korea and Bryant before, you know, it's just young guys coming up that are developing into real good players and. And you know what? Maybe that's the way to go. Even when the Giants, you know, won the World Series too. You know, Bumgarner was great, but other than Posey, not too many superstars on the team. Just guys that pl- play the game the right way, hungry, run the balls out, and um, have good good energy. And those are the guys you need. Well, you mentioned the Cardinals earlier. I don't really. I mean, other than Molina, I would assume most people would consider to be a superstar. But I don't think there's another guy on that team I would consider to be like a a top guy starter, a, a huge closer, a big bat. Uh, they're just all really good guys. Yep, just good, solid guys. And you know, I even mean, when we talked about this season with our guy, with our team, we, you know, we had the right guys. You know, maybe not all the most talented guys. I mean, we had some talent, but we had the right guys. And I think that's what you need to do. That's what you need to win. You need to have the right guys that have the right attitude. Going into our football question, starting out with Peyton Manning there. Ethan from Burnsville asks, how significant do you think is the injury to Peyton Manning, and what do you think that does to their Super Bowl chances? Yeah, it's, um, I guess they already ruled him out for next week, so it's a blow to lose him. Um, but, again, it's just people are saying, well, he's old and his, the arm strength's gone, but you just don't know if maybe he's just playing hurt and – that's why he's not as effective. You know, maybe a week off would do him good. You know, who knows? It's obviously losing him. It's it'd be tough, and um, you know, and you know, with New England out there in the AFC, it's um, it's they're going to be a tough team to beat. So, with Peyton Manning or without, um, I'm not sure if anybody can beat the Patriots. Is you know, as good as that game was yesterday with the Giants. I mean, they almost did, and it came down to the end. <laughs> so, um, but, you know. I would love to see a Patriots um, Viking Super Bowl. That, that's that's what I'm hoping for. And, and if it happened, I don't think anybody can be surprised. Well, uh, on the 50th anniversary. There we go. Uh, Nate from Anoka asked, the Packers seem to be collapsing. What do you think is going on there? Yeah, it's um, – and let me be clear. I'm no football expert in any way, so I watch the games like everybody else does. And, you know, from watching those games, it seems like – Every Rogers is running for his life. It seems like when he's back, you know, he hasn't been as sharp as he normally is, and I mean, as great as he's been over the years. But I think it's just he's running for his life. They're they're in his face right away, and he's got to get that ball, you know, get rid of the ball a little bit quicker than normal. And um, but I think we had that same problem last year with them at the beginning. They had a rough start, and everybody said, "Okay, they're done," and then we saw what happened. So um, it's they're going to be fine, and just give them a little more time and. And then the big showdown this weekend, and it's it's going to be an exciting game. Our next question comes from Charles and Egan, and after we've had issues that we've seen about this earlier, I know that this would be the right question for you, so good for you, Charles. That Odell Beckham Jr. call yesterday was outrageous. How is that not a catch? I just don't get how sports works these days. I agree, and I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think anybody knows what a catch is, and even last night, you know, watching the, the Sunday night game, even Chris Collinsworth said, it's just nobody knows what a catch is anymore, and he's right. Nobody does. We don't know, and um, again, obviously with the 
the Beckham play yesterday and then live the play last night in that in the Sunday night game. It's whatever happened in the days where the guy catches it, just take two steps. Wouldn't that be wouldn't that make it simple? Two I thought steps. It was good, yeah. If he has it after two steps, make it a catch and then life's a lot easier for everybody. <laughs> you, you just don't know what's gonna happen. And it's just as great as as great as sport of football is to watch, that's just one thing that it's just very frustrating for everybody and it's just like nobody knows what it catches. Maybe I can understand this better, so I'm going to ask if some fan out there knows the answer to this and could send in the answer to us. We'd appreciate it. But is there a definition in the rule book of what a football play is? Because this is what I always seem to get. Oh, he didn't make a football play. And I'm thinking, well, what is that? I mean, who defines yeah. what that is? I don't know. I have no idea. But it seems like a lot of these um, these catches over the last few years, it seemed like catches. It seemed like most of them are rolled that they weren't catches. And it just... I don't know. I think it's just kind of – it's not good for the game. It's its just not good. If a guy catches the ball, takes two steps, just make it simple, and then it should be a catch. But that's not the way it is. It's crazy. Carrie from Baltimore asks, do you think that uh, the Carolina Panthers and Cincinnati Bengals could be in the Super Bowl this season? Uh, I don't think – I don't think they're both undefeated, and I wouldn't be surprised if both of them were. Um, again, I'm hoping for that Patriots-Vikings Super Bowl. <laughs> um, that would be – that would be better for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but you know what? What we talked about before with the Panthers, too. It's like, I know they have that nasty defense. That's a nasty defense they have. And um, you know, and Cam Newton's been a solid player. And um, But there's no superstars on that team either. They just go out there and get it done. And um, they just play well together. And it seems like that's what you need, um, you know, these days. Just good, solid players and with the right attitude and – positive energy. Our next question comes from Bob from Plymouth who wants to know, how do you see the Julian Edelman injury affecting the Patriots? Tom Brady is the best, but there has this really has to hurt him, don't you think? Yeah, I would think it would hurt. And, but they they find ways to get it done. They seem to always um, get it done. Coach is great, quarterback's great, tight end's great, and their defense is you know playing better this year than the normal. And you know what? Even yesterday, I don't know if you did. You get a chance to watch that game yesterday, or some of it I did. Yes. But even the end, though, it's like the Patriots are undefeated, and you just see the, the attitude they have and the energy they have, and even come down to the last you know, to the last kick, it's it's like you can see how bad they wanted it, and um, that's like if they lost that game, they would have been devastated. And I, and I think that's the right way to go about it. You should see that more when guys lose games; they're devastated and. Um, that's the way I feel about things. And, you know, when they win games, how excited they are. And they always seem to win, don't they? And it's just, it's like every week, it's just a new week going about their business and play the game the right way. You, you know, I'm curious from your standpoint of being a professional athlete. Um, I, I think back in the days when Joe Montana was quarterbacking in San Francisco, and I look at Tom Brady in this kind of same light, is that, is there a point from the opposing team standpoint, do you think that they, as much as they go in there and prepare and, and battle and work, that they just expect something to go bad against them, that that a Montana or Brady always figures out a way to beat them, and they just expect that? Does that is that kind of mentality ever play a part? Um, you know, I think the, I think the Patriots expect it. I think Tom Brady expects to go out there and, and win and pull games out late, and he always does that, and um, you know, the other team, you know, you're when you're playing teams like that, you want it so bad. You, you know, you may be even go a little bit harder and and trying to beat them, and it just and when you have it that close, I mean, the Giants were up by ten points in the third quarter, and um, and again, obviously leading at the end with two minutes left, having the ball at the two three yard line, and uh, to lose a game like that, it's just so devastating to lose like that because again, you could have beat the best, you were that close to doing it, but. As usual, or 99% of the time, Tom Brady pulls it out. He is amazing. Our last question comes from Brad from St. Paul, who asked, that Todd Gurley guy looks like he's a lot of fun to watch run with the ball. Do you see him possibly eclipsing the all-time rushing yards record? I know he looks real good. I mean, I don't know about the rushing record, but you know what? He's he's something else, and um, I think we'll see him for a long time, a good you know, eight, ten years, and... Um, wouldn't be surprised because he, he, he's exciting to watch. Absolutely. Well, George, thank you for joining us this week. 
Okay, thank you very much. All right, see you next week. We want to thank Manager George Samus for joining us on Strike Zone this week. If you have your own questions you'd like to ask the St. Paul Saints skipper, please send them to us at AskGeorge at MinorLeagueSportsSupport.com. That's AskGeorge at MinorLeagueSportsSupport.com. Please have your questions to us by Sunday evening so we can have them available to the skipper before we record our show Monday afternoon. I want to thank you again for joining us this week. I'm Rob Panier, the managing editor of the Minor League Sports Report, and we'll look for you next week on Strike Zone.